name of the Lord, hallelujah. Good morning, RCF. Yeah, good morning. This time change, huh? I tried to go to bed a little bit earlier so that I could adjust, but I still feel it. Yeah, I'm in seminary. I had to, um, I had to do two quizzes this weekend and study, so it's been a lot. But you know what? God is faithful because I, here's what I told God. This is your word, your people, right? So when I took my first quiz, I got 100. When I took my second quiz, I got a 90. So in, the, in between all of that, I've been studying. So praise the Lord. But there is a word from the Lord. There is. I don't know about you guys, but watching TV and, and just all the stuff that's been going on in our society, in, our, in America, in our city, it can be disheartening. Now, I watched the R. Kelly interview on Friday night. I did. But I just felt so, so down because he looked so hopeless. And I'm not defending nobody. I'm not defending nobody. But see, when hopelessness sets in, death is inevitable. Death is inevitable. No hope, no life, no God, no life. Have you ever been hopeless? Have you ever been hopeless? Hallelujah. Hopelessness, it means providing no hope. It means despairing, desperation, despondency, discouragement, misery, pain, sorrow, trials, gloom. Hopelessness occurs when life hurts, when dreams fade, when we feel trapped, when we lose our way, when we are confused, when we panic, when we struggle with a crippling disease or a lingering illness, when we fear the worst, when we must endure the consequences of a bad decision, when we're unemployed, when we're rejected, when we're abandoned, when we're grieved, hopelessness results in death. But I got some good news for you. Because God says this morning, if you're feeling hopeless, that he wants you to arise and live. Arise and live. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning. We honor you. We praise you. We bless your holy name, God. We ask that you speak, Lord. We ask you, God, that you move me, your servant, out of the way, Lord, and you stand and, and rise up and, and provide life and hope, Lord. Save somebody today, God. Save somebody today, Lord. Loosen the chains that bind them today, Lord. We praise you. We honor you in your mighty son, Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to be looking at, the, uh, to, at Ezekiel uh, chapter 37, Ezekiel chapter 37. Yeah, we're going to see our old buddies, the children of Israel, and they find themselves in a hopeless situation. They're despondent. They're, they're despaired. Why? Because they have been taken captive by the Babylonians, and they are in exile. Remember, God had promised them a land and a city, and he gave it to them. And they were living in the city of Jerusalem. And they built this grand, beautiful temple for the Lord to dwell. But they continuously, continuously were disobedient. They continuously and relentlessly worshipped idols. And even in the presence of God... The beautiful grand temple that was holy where God dwelled. They were worshiping idols in the temple. Oh yeah, I said that too. I was crying. I clutched my pearls. Touched my body and I said, 
Paul said in the New Testament, did you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? So then I began to cry harder because I thought of all the places I've taken God. All the things I've worshipped that wasn't him. Hallelujah. So let's don't think Israel was so bad because we walk around with the holy presence within us. Hallelujah. Okay, so back to Israel. They sinned in the holy temple. And so God allowed Babylon to come in and take them captive. And they plummeted the city. They burnt down the temple. And it was as if to say, yo, God can't do nothing to us. He's weak. And he's, and he's not strong. So they took the, the Israelites to Babylon for 70 years. And while they were there, they became despondent in despair. And in despair, and they were hopeless. Why? Because they were away from their home. They were away from their God. They were away from the presence of him. You see, where there's no future and no God, there's no hope. Hopelessness results in death. Can I have my first screen, first uh, slide on the screen, please? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the entire verses 1 through 14. And what you're going to see is like from 1 to 10, it's like a vision or a, a analogy or a metaphor, right? You're going to see that. And then when you get to verse 11, then God just explains the metaphor, and the vision. Okay? So, from the NIV, is like Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me up out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. And they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones, here's an explanation. These bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you, you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hopelessness results in death, but God wants us to arise and live. And here's my big idea. We can be resuscitated from our hopeless conditions that result in death if we allow God to speak and breathe life into us. 
we can be resuscitated from our hopeless conditions that result in death if we allow God to speak and breathe into our lives. Amen. So I got to explain this so we'll understand. Keep your Bibles open. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to take verses from the vision and then verses from the explanation and group them together. So hopefully it doesn't seem too confusing, but I'll try to guide you as we go along. So my first point is this. When we are hopeless, we dry up and die. When we are hopeless, we dry up and die. Go to my next point please but here's the good news God will meet us in the graveyard okay he'll meet us in the graveyard okay so the bones they they represent the exile in verse 11 he said son of man these bones are the people of Israel they say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone right so it represents the exile. They are in a hopeless condition, as I explained, because they angered and they hurt God for their relentless idolatry, okay? And so up until this time, Israel's kings, most of them were evil. And you know what happens when the leader is evil, then it trinkles down. That it, the leaders were allowing idolatry and, and, and uh, idol worship. And so... The grand temple in Jerusalem that represented the presence of God, they began to do that in the temple. And, and as I was reading through Ezekiel, this one piece just hurt my heart. God was showing Ezekiel the, the elders worshiping idols in the temple. And then he showed him this. The glory of God began to leave the temple. They call it a divine abandonment. So Babylon didn't just overcome their God. Their God had left. The glory of, the, the glory of God left the temple. And here's what it said. It was slow and it, and it kind of hesitated. And that made me think that's how much God loves us. That's how much he loves us. But see... They had to be judged. They had to be judged. They had to suffer the consequences of their sin. So he departed. He allowed Babylon to come in and take them captive and take them away from their home and away from their God. But God will meet us in the graveyard. Yeah, he will. Come on, let's look at verse 1. It's, it said, the hand of the Lord was on me. That's Ezekiel and, and talking and he brought me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley full of bones and I walked around in them I observed them and what I observed was that they, they really were dead they were dry and they were dead and he said can these bones live and, and Ezekiel replied only you know so what we see is Ezekiel is called as the prophet to the exiles. He was called to preach a word from God to those in captivity. Okay? So he's observing the bones and finds out they're dead. And what the bones represented was the skeletal remains of a vast army. And some say... It might have been uh, representing Israel being plummeted or defeated by Babylon. In, the, in uh, biblical times, when one army would defeat another army, they would leave the defeated army in an open grave and just leave them uncovered and unburied. Somebody say uncovered, unburied. The enemy would leave the defeated army, uncovered, and unburied. Okay? Now, when a person dies, the body immediately decomposes. Amen? Immediately. I remember when my mom passed away. In my dad's mind, he believed she had 
died in his arms like right before the paramedics got there. But what the paramedics told me was that she had been dead a couple of hours. Why? Because decomposition had set in. And there's a process, and that's how the coroner can tell how long a person has been dead. Okay? So when a person dies, immediately they begin to decompose. And if they're left outside and uncovered, depending on the element, it could happen rapidly. When they're left uncovered and unburied, it's subject to animals and bugs. Decom decomposition means that a person is rotting and decaying. So a person dies and they immediately began to decompose. See, when we're hopeless, we dry up and we die. And then when we're left uncovered by the enemy, when we're left uncovered, God is not in our, we don't have our relationship or some people don't even know God. We're uncovered, unburied, we're left to decompose, to rot. We're left to rot. Have you ever been hopeless? Have you ever noticed things getting worse? Have you ever felt like when it rains, it pours? Have you ever felt like you were drying up and dying? <laughs> Here's an example. At first, it was fun getting high. We giggled and hee heed. And then addiction set in. And it became depressing. Decomposition. Decomposition. Have you ever had an affair? It was intriguing, exciting that somebody would check me out. But then it became lonely. You lose your family. Whatever happens, decomposition. Decomposition. Amen. Have you ever been sick, went to the doctor and, 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 and had a surgery, and then that surgery caused something else to happen, and then when that something else happened, then you lose your job, and then you lose your job, and you lose your stuff, and you lose your things, and you have no friends? Decomposition. But God will meet you in the graveyard. God will meet you in the graveyard. You see, the graveyard is the vehicle for restoration. I said the graveyard is the vehicle for restoration. See, we forget what God says sometimes. He told Israel it'll just be 70 years. I know that was a long time, but, but, but he spoke a word. It's going to be 70 years, but yet they, were, they felt hopeless. Remember King David? He anointed him king. Told him he would be king. Although it, had, it took a while, here's what he said in 1 Samuel about Saul. One of these days I will be destroyed by the hand of Saul. That doesn't sound like an excited, excited king, right? Decomposition. I remember a long time ago in my life when I allowed church, church is the key word, not God, when I allowed church to be my idol. And my marriage began to become hopeless. Decomposition. Yeah, but God will meet us in the graveyard. Why? Let's go to point two. Because God will resuscitate us from the hopeless conditions that result in death by speaking a word and breathing life in us. Amen. Verse 12. Verse 12. I had to look at my points, y'all. <laughs> Verse 12. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up 
from them. So he has a restoration process for the nation of Israel. You're hopeless right now. You're feeling despair. You're away from me, but I'm going to bring you up out of the grave. He's speaking life into them. See, when God speaks, something happens. Right? When God speaks, something happens. You don't believe me? Go to Genesis chapter 1. In verse 2, it says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And guess what? There was light. Because when God speaks, something happens. Still don't believe me? Go to Genesis 2. <laughs> and the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a walking, talking, thinking, living being. Because when God breathes, life happens. When God breathes, life happens. Psalm 104, you hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. But you send forth your spirit and they are created and you renew the face of the earth. When God speaks and breathes, death has to flee. <sighs> Hopelessness results in death. But God says to arise and live. He'll resuscitate us by speaking and breathing life. So here's what he said to the Israelites in Jeremiah. He said, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, the plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you, guess what, hope and a future. They have a word from the Lord because when God speaks, something happens. See, resuscitation brings life. When God resuscitates, he reverses the decomposition process. You don't believe me? Look at the vision. He said, prophesy to the bones. Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach the tendons to you and make flesh come upon you, reversing decomposition, and I will cover you with skin, and I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So Ezekiel said, I preached, I preached, and I commanded to them. And I heard a noise and a rattling, and the bones started coming together bone to bone. They said, somebody said, the foot bone was connected to the ankle bone and the ankle bone was connected to the leg bone. Yeah, and they started coming together like a person. But here's the thing. The person was still not alive. The walking dead. You've seen them. Don't look at your neighbor. But you've seen them. The walking dead, no life. They live in your home. They work at your job. They go to your church. They on Facebook. <laughs> they on Twitter, Instagram. The walking dead, no God, no life. They look like a person. Some of them are on drugs and some of them look like it, but some people you can look at them and you can't tell. They work in high places. They lead countries. The walking dead. So then God said, then prophesy to the breath. So he preached to the breath. And he said, come from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they might live. 
So Ezekiel began to prophesy, and they had life because only the Spirit gives life. Only the Spirit gives life. When we allow God to speak and breathe in our hopeless conditions, we can live again. Here's what he said to me when my marriage was hopeless and he resuscitated it when I began to apply the word. He said, wife, submit yourself to your husband as you do unto the Lord. And then he said, and my life and my marriage was resuscitated. Hallelujah. Because God can resuscitate us from our hopeless conditions that result in death by speaking and breathing life into us. Let's go to the third screen. God will put his spirit in us so we can arise. Why? Because hope results in life. He puts his spirit in us so we can arise because hope results in life. Verse 14. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your, in your own land. Then you will know that I the Lord have spoken and I have done it. So he's taking Israel back to their land. And what does that mean? It means a future. It means prosperity. It means restoration. It means forgiveness. Because when God puts his spirit in us, we can arise. So here's the vision. This is Ezekiel. He said, so I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them, talking about the bones, and they came to life. And they stood up on their feet, a vast army. The Lord put his spirit in the dry bones and they came to life. They arose like a large army ready for their marching orders, ready for their battle. The songwriter said something like this. I am a soldier in the army of the Lord. I said, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And guess what? I got my war clothes on. I got my war clothes on. I got my sword and my shield. I got my breastplate and my helmet. I got my belt and my shoes. I got my war clothes on. I'm ready for battle. Because see, when God resuscitates us from sure death, we can arise and live. Hallelujah. And the, and the thing we need to understand is that it's not about us. It's not about us. When God resuscitates us from sure death, it's not about us, but it's all about God. See, if you read the rest of Ezekiel, when you read the rest of Ezekiel, what you'll see is that God will tell them over and over again that I will be your God and you will be my people. I will be your God and you will be my people. They will know that I am God. They will know when I resuscitate you, when I give you life, they will know, meaning the world, that I am the Lord. See, God wants to put his name on us. He wants to put his name on us. He wants the world to know that he is our Lord. I said he wants the world to know we are the Ezekiels. We are Ezekiel. We've been called to the exiles. We've been called to the captives. They're in the city. They're everywhere. Topaz sent us a text the other day about something that happened in Boulder. And she said, where is the church? We are the church. We are Ezekiel. We've been called to the exiles. We need to let them know that God gives life. Hallelujah. We have to let the captives know that they can live Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Teach us to, to arise and, and live, Lord. Teach us to, to, to preach your word of life. Teach us, Lord, to, to have a discerning heart and discerning spirit and discerning eyes, Lord, 
that we might be able to walk up to a dry and dead person and let them know that they can live. Let them know that you can breathe a life into them, Lord. Let them know that you can save somebody because you saved us. And so, God, we honor, we bless you, we praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise.